On last week's video, we did the Blue Mesa Trail. This week, we're doing its next door neighbor, the Blue Forest Trail. This slightly lesser known hike starts across the street from the teepees, which is another cool spot to check out. This trail has an overall distance of three miles with an elevation gain of 200 feet. You may have to do a tiny bit of wayfinding on this hike because this is considered a backcountry trail. It's not paved and maintained like some of the other hikes in the park. Besides the beautiful Chinle formations that surround you, the first half mile of this hike is rather uneventful. It is just a flat walk towards the hills that are directly in front of you. Once you get almost all of the way to the hills, you will see one trail marker sitting in the middle of nowhere. This is when the trail will start to get a little bit more interesting. If you pay close attention, you will see that there is one more marker tucked into the hillside. This is pretty much the last marker that you will see on this hike. This trail can be a little bit hard to follow sometimes, but just look for the dirt that has been flattened out by all of the hikers that have come before you. Even though this hike has 200 feet of elevation gain, it doesn't seem like it's that difficult. A lot of that elevation is broken up into smaller climbs along the way. As with most hikes, shoes with a good amount of traction will make your life easier. There's nothing too insane here, but some of the climbs do have just enough loose topsoil to be a little bit on the slippery side. As we continued to climb, we could still see the Jeep way off in the distance. And we can also see that the clay around us was starting to turn purple. If you visit on cloudier days, the soft light will really bring out the vibrant colors of the clay. Unfortunately, on this day, we had pretty much blue skies, so the colors were a little bit muted. If you have already watched last week's video about Blue Mesa, let me start by saying you're awesome. If you haven't seen it, I'll put a link to it in the upper corner right now. In that video, I briefly explained where the purple clay comes from. I'll do a quick breakdown for anyone that is new to the channel. A lot of the dirt that you find out here is what is known as bentonite clay. Around 200 million years ago, most of this area was underwater. This clay is high in carbon and iron minerals. Minerals like iron would usually rust and cause a reddish hue to the clay. But since this area was underwater at the time, it didn't have the oxygen needed to create rust and instead took on a purplish hue. Please note that we are not geologists and this is just what we have found out through research. So feel free to let us know in the comments if we got any of these facts wrong. One thing that's really cool about this hike is that even though it's only about a mile and a half each way, the scenery keeps changing. There is obviously the purple hills and then there's areas like this that have a chalky white appearance to them. As you continue on your way, you're going to come up on several points where you're hiking on narrow ridges. You really need to watch your step at this point. You're not super high just yet, but I'm sure you still don't want to fall down that hill. You will eventually be climbing up to some hills that you really don't want to fall off. We were there on a very dry day, but I can only imagine that you would not want to attempt this hike after any type of rain. You would probably sink into the clay like quicksand. As we crested one of the climbs, we were surprised to see a large collection of petrified wood. Obviously, we shouldn't be too shocked seeing as how we are inside Petrified Forest National Park but this was the largest amount that we had seen so far on this hike. This is the kind that looks just like regular wood, but listen to the sound that it makes when you bounce the little pieces off of each other. It kind of sounds like either metal or glass. At this point, you still have a little bit of climbing left to do if you want to go all the way to the end of the trail. This is probably the trickiest part of this hike. That's mainly because the trail gets really narrow here and it is pretty high at this point. If you have a fear of heights, this part could be a little bit intense for you. But we think that the view that you get from here is well worth the effort that it takes to get here. Once you are up on the top of the ridge, you are a short walk over to the juniper trees that mark the end of this trail. These are the same juniper trees that you can see on the back of the Blue Mesa Trail. From here, you're just going to turn around and head back the way that you came. When we looked on all trails, it looked like someone had found a way to turn this hike into a loop, but we did this as an out and back. There is also a way to connect this hike to the Blue Mesa Trail if you really want to stretch out the distance. We did end up making one last stop at this scenic viewpoint on the way back because this area is so incredibly photogenic. Since we did this as a simple out and back trail, it was really quite an easy hike back. But the cool thing is that we were getting to enjoy the scenery from another angle. This trail can take you from two to three hours to complete depending on how many stops you make and how many pictures you like to take. If you're visiting during the warmer months, be sure to bring a ton of water. This entire hike is exposed and it would be nearly impossible to find a way to get away from the heat. 
Well, that's gonna do it for our hike to Petrified Forest National Park's Blue Forest. What is your favorite thing to do inside this park? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe because those are the best things that you can do to support this channel. Check us out on Instagram at thatadventurelife underscore official and for all the information about this hike as well as other awesome things to do in Petrified Forest National Park, head on over to thatadventurelife.com.